In nearly 14,000 cases and 706 deaths, Colorado is recalculating the risk with reopening. And doctors agree we will likely see more cases as a result. Now, they also admit it could be months before we have the supplies needed to conduct that widespread testing and contact tracing. And then there are unemployment claims. Nearly 400,000 Coloradans are now out of work. Businesses unsure if they're going to survive. All to say that Governor Polis did not come to this decision to reopen overnight. Contact 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski has been poring over correspondence between the state and the federal government. And what she found is a pattern of changing information, questionable guidance from the White House, and a governor tasked with balancing lives and livelihoods. What started as an open records request for communication between Governor Polis and the federal government tied to our COVID-19 response, led to nearly 2,000 emails. They give us a timeline of the state and federal response as the pandemic was happening. We've learned the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services held a national briefing call about COVID-19 on February 14th. Six days later, there was a governor's only call with HHS Secretary Alex Azar. March 2nd, another governor's only call, this time with Vice President Pence. And this one came back as presumptive positive. Then, on March 5th, Colorado confirms its first case of COVID-19. The uh, patient was advised for his health to be transported to lower altitudes. A male in his 30s and an out-of-state visitor staying in Summit County. Three days later, the White House downplays the risk of the virus. Writing in this email with a photo of the president, because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. Mid-March is when things start to heat up, and the state appears to respond much faster to the crisis than the feds. Emails show on March 12th, Governor Polis asked for a call with the FDA commissioner. Instead, he has a call with an FDA director. The call is about two major Colorado hospitals seeking FDA approval to start testing for the virus. Two days later, the governor's office writes to the FDA, we continue to remain far behind on capacity. March 17th, Polis asks for a call with Vice President Pence and outlines a list of questions. March 20th, the feds confirm Colorado's last shipment of personal protective equipment from the national stockpile. More than 48,000 respirators, 115,000 surgical masks, face shields, surgical gowns, coveralls, and gloves. Four days later, a Colorado ER doctor tells us about the urgent need for more protective gear. We have days of personal protective equipment, not weeks, not months. Then on March 26th, Colorado's governor requests a major disaster declaration. March 28th, Polis writes this letter to Vice President Pence. He asks for help, addressing the dire shortage of personal protective equipment and ventilators in Colorado. Polis requests 10,000 ventilators and more protective gear. An inside look at the pandemic as it unfolded. I'm Contact 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski. There really is an incredible amount of nuance in these emails, far too much to capture in a two-minute story. So for a larger, more detailed version, you can go to the denverchannel.com.